I've just had a brilliant idea for a video. What we're going to do is we're going to make a liquid nitrogen light bulb. Now before we do that though, let's have a look at a normal light bulb to see how it works. So at first sight, all you can make out really is the glass envelope and underneath that you've got this metal bit with two terminals attached to it. If we remove the glass envelope, what we end up with is this. So you can see we've got the two terminals here and they are connected to two thicker fairly rigid wires which come out of this glass post in the centre. Now, connecting the two rigid wires is a much more delicate structure and if you look very closely at it, it looks a bit like a spring. Uh, and that is actually a piece of tungsten metal. Now, tungsten is used as the filament, that's what we call it, for the light bulb, because it has an interesting property. Now, if you've already seen our video on LEDs, you'll know a bit about how LEDs emit light. And uh, an incandescent light bulb uses the same kind of principle. And that principle is you're moving electrons from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. And as they do that, the energy they lose is emitted as a photon. And the energy of that photon depends on the difference between those two energy levels. If there's a big difference, then the photon has high energy and it's a bluer colour if you like, it's got more energy. If those energy levels are close together, the photon emitted is quite a low energy photon so that the light it emits will be a redder colour. Now this is obviously if we're only talking about the visible spectrum. It, obviously there, there's more to the electromagnetic spectrum than just that, but we'll stick with the visible spectrum for now. Now, the electrons in tungsten are excited by the electric current that travels up from this terminal here around the filament back down this wire to this terminal here. They're excited, they've got more energy, but this is only a temporary state of affairs. So eventually that electron will have to lose that energy and drop back down to a lower energy level again. And as it does that, it emits a photon. Now in tungsten, there are a range of energy levels that the electrons can take up. And it just so happens that the corresponding photons they emit are of a mixture of colours of different wavelengths and frequencies which make up a type of light which is quite close to daylight. It's a whitey yellow light. So that's basically how a light bulb works. So why do we bother with the glass bit? What's the point? Not only does the glass bit actually physically protect the filament because it's very delicate, but it does something else. And there you can see it. Now, what it actually does is it prevents oxygen getting to the filament and causing that to happen. Right. That happened because as the electric current passes through our tungsten filament, it heats it up to a very high temperature. And at that temperature, the tungsten can react with oxygen in the air and oxidize or burn. And when that happens, the metal filament will break. As a result, we have a short circuit, electric current can no longer flow through the light bulb and it can no longer emit light. So the glass envelope plays a key role in preventing that from happening because it traps inside the light bulb an atmosphere of inert gas. So there is no oxygen in the light bulb. So as the electric current heats the filament up, there's no oxygen in that light bulb for the filament to react with. So it carries on shining merrily away. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a light bulb filament and instead of putting it in that atmosphere of inert gas, we're going to put it into liquid nitrogen. Now, obviously, liquid nitrogen doesn't contain oxygen and it is also very cold. It's fairly inert. It's not an electrical conductor. So we should be able to keep our filament shining because oxygen won't be able to reach it uh, and therefore it won't oxidize. So let's give it a go. Right, in goes the nitrogen. Let's hope we've got enough. Need to just cover the filament.
Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone's going to be stocking Wonderstruck liquid nitrogen light bulbs anytime soon. The kind of average life is about 30 seconds or so, but that's not because the filament was oxidising. There was no oxygen. It's probably because the nitrogen was boiling and it's just the mechanical stress caused by the repeated impact of all those nitrogen bubbles that actually broke the filament. Um, now, actually, if you take a look at our light bulb filaments, the ones that we've retrieved, you'll see there's a difference between the ones that broke in the nitrogen and the ones that broke in air. So you can see the one that broke in air is covered in this white powder and that's tungsten oxide. These three here were the ones that actually broke in the nitrogen. You can see they're completely clean. There is no tungsten oxide on them because there was no oxygen for the oxide to form. So there you go, liquid nitrogen light bulbs, great fun for 30 seconds, but rather expensive to fill your house with them.